Hello, good morning, and welcome to ICAST 2020. It's a beautiful day here in Florida. It'd be a great time to go out and be on the water fishing. It'd be a great time if we were at ICAST in Orlando, but as that's not possible, fortunately, some very creative people have made it available to us that we can have education online at your convenience in your business at home. Welcome to the ICAST Business Seminar Series. Our topic is called Disrupting or Prompting, and we're talking about what's going on with the virus. Disrupting or Prompting, is this affecting how you are approaching business? The answer is yes because we've seen a lot of variances in how businesses, those who are essential and those that are considered non-essential, have responded. All kinds of responses. What we want to look at today is that as people come forward, having the opportunity to get out, how are they going to do business going forward? Even as our industry was considered essential and we, for most of us, continued on with our business as usual, we're seeing changes in the way that people are shopping, what people are doing, and we have an opportunity to do something different. For today, I have been at ICAST multiple times over the years. I teach business management education. My company is called Profits Plus, and I created it because I'm a fourth generation owner myself. My great-grandfather started our business in 1922. <coughs> I've written a bunch of books. I've been a columnist for a lot of trade magazines. I have, through organizations like the SBDC, uh, been a coach to a lot of folks out there. And yes, I'm at ICAST frequently, but I've got a whole lot of years of being out there. Something like this. This is when my grandfather owned the store. So you can see the rods and reels and displays of lures there. The unfortunate thing is, at times when I have shown this, someone says, wow, that looks a lot like my place. And I will say, gee, I hope not, because that picture was taken somewhere in the late 1950s, I believe. Uh, I hope that your business looks a whole lot more modern than what, what this does. So over things have caused us to change the way that we shop, what we do. There's been a bunch of them. Uh, for example, in 1950s, we started getting strip centers. I remember in my hometown of Fort Smith, the first of the strip centers, and that was going to change the way people were going to shop. And in the late 60s, the mass merchants began to occur. Well, again, growing up in Arkansas, home of Walmart, we saw them from a very early time frame. Also, in the late 1960s, we began to get malls. That was going to change how it was. Matter of fact, there were people who were already beginning to say, this is going to be the death of the small business owner out there. In 1971, FedEx, create, which happened to be created in Little Rock, Arkansas, changed the way because people expected delivery of things much quicker. If I could have a package delivered across country by FedEx overnight, then surely I could take and have merchandise do your business a whole lot quicker. People expected that. And in 1994, when the internet came along, suddenly there was a whole new bunch of competitors out there. What else affected us? How about 9-11? Remember that incident? What happened to our country? And things that they told us were going to be different in our business? And then, of course, 2008, when we experienced the Great Recession, there were changes there. And then that brings us to today the COVID-19 virus. We've never seen anything like it. There were a few of us who were alive who'd seen anything like the Great Recession and none of us ever had and hopefully never ever again will see something like the 9-11 attack on our country. Remember what they told us after 9-11? They said that business will never be the same again. They told us that people are now going to be afraid. They won't come out. Matter of fact, that was going to be how America was going to lose the war on terrorism. It would be they, as individuals, would be so afraid to go shopping that terrorism would beat us. It wasn't as much the destruction and the lives cost, it was the after effects that were going to tremendously change us. And yet, September 18th, there was the President of the United States throwing out the first baseball at Yankee Stadium to what was a packed stadium. So I ask you as you're looking today, do you see anything out there 
from the time since the pandemic started in March. Any of these trends for spending that were changed permanently in the way customers are doing? We see some, we're gonna share some with you and how we think we can use these all to our advantage. So as we are again hearing in the media how this is going to kill retail, this is how many thousands and thousands of stores are gonna close and people will never shop the way again. There'll be some alterations, but we're not going away. My expression has been independent small businesses are like sharks and cockroaches. We're not going away. We've been around forever. We'll continue to be there. But I want you to think about how things have changed. It's been ongoing. This picture represents something my, my dad used to always tell me. He said, son, let me tell you how business operates. Once upon a time, there was a man at bat in a baseball game. The pitcher throws the ball, the batter swings, and hits the ball out between right and center field. The ball is rolling out there. The man takes in, runs to first, turns the corner, heads for second base, and goes sliding in, at which time the person in right field has brought up the ball, thrown it to the second baseman. The second baseman is turning to make a tag on the runner as they come into the second base, and the umpire comes running over puts two fingers up in the air and says, second down. And the young Tom Shea would look at his father and say, what's the message, Dad? What's the essence of it? And Dad says, son, we're not playing by the same rules anymore. Things are changing. And that is a lot of what we've seen during the pandemic, and that's why we have to resort to being ICAST 2020 online. The question I ask of you is, do these things disrupt business or do they prompt us to do something differently? Is of two people walking in front of a Victoria's Secret. It was there that I first learned the idea of seeing businesses differently. I was doing it. I just didn't realize it was something different. I was walking through a mall with my mentor. We walked past the Victoria's Secret. We stopped it, looked at one of those giant window displays. My mentor said, you don't see what other people see. And I go, I don't get it. He says, most people are going to look at that window. They're going to see a model. They're going to see bras and panties. You don't see that. You see something different. You're always looking at one kind of business, trying to translate it to another kind of business. I said, my thought as I stand in front of Victoria's Secret is that in the years, I believe they were the late 70s, perhaps early 80s, that we listened to music on cassettes. I know that Victoria's Secret sold more cassettes of classical music than any other retailer in the United States, more than any type of specialty store out there, more than any catalog, they sold the most classical music. And I said, I get it. See, at that time, Victoria's Secret was a different type of store. Their target customer was an older person, 30 and up. And they came in and they looked at a store that had a lot of dark wood, red velvet uh, trim to the walls, all kinds of lingerie, and the store played classical music. They were selling to a man or a woman who was coming to buy something to be a part of an experience, a part of a wedding, a part of an anniversary, a part of a getaway, something that was a special occasion. This was event shopping. And when you got to the cash register, what you saw was cassettes of classical music and people would buy them thinking this must be a part of the experience. Well, look at it in our business. We sell experiences. We sell lots of things, products that relate to fishing, but we can also sell things that relate to experience. So as you look at that, I want you to think about how do I sell experience? Think about looking at other stores as you're out and about, see what they do and go, can I learn from these people? And the answer is yes, you can learn from other ones because there are certain things that customers do a way that no matter what business they're in, they're always going to do it that way. An example, Customers are always going to look to the right, and if they can, they're going to walk to the right. 
The prime space for showing them merchandise is between four feet and six foot six. That's where you really want to put the items that you want to sell. The COVID-19 crisis. The one thing that does concern me is that it has taken something like this to prompt business owners to be creative. It's taking something like this to get people to learn management skills, to become better business owners. Those that survive, and it will be the majority of us, will be those who take and learn how to be a better business owner instead of thinking all we have to do is wait for some wholesaler to show up, sell us merchandise, put the merchandise on the shelf, and wait for customers to show up. That's the business that does not become creative. I think that has the least chance of surviving what's going on. For example, this couple is in Sarasota, Florida. They bought this trailer. They had that beautiful wrap job done to it. And now they have a portable showroom that goes to your business, goes to your home. They open up the sides. They open up the back. They have their displays in there. They can disconnect their truck in the front. And if necessary, as you shop by yourself in this moving store, they get in the truck, they go to the store, they pick up additional samples, and they bring them back to you. Because the storefront is so small, they can't accommodate as many customers. We've seen restaurants that now add groceries to selling to people. The one just up the street from our office has sold everything from hand sanitizer to toilet paper, all kinds of things, as a way to get people to come to their business. We've seen restaurants who were also very creative that started creating their meals, packaging them, and selling them in stores that normally don't sell foods. But the meal is completely packaged. It keeps the restaurant in business. And then we saw the appliance dealer who took their warehouse and their parking lot and converted both into the sales floor, again, because they had a smaller show room. So by taking products, put them on a pallet, moving them out into the parking lot, they now had a, a giant store. That's just some of the creativity that we have seen going on. So we see, we see fewer births. College enrollment has for the last few years and is continuing to drop. You may have seen in your area where colleges and universities are cutting back because with fewer births, there are fewer students coming up to enroll, and it's not going to be something that's just this year. If there are lower births this year, then you're looking at 17, 18 years from now, still lower enrollment. We see spending on entertainment is increasing, particularly with the younger crowd. That's become more important to them. Not things, but entertainment. As long as we package ourselves as being entertainment, we're good. Another example I share is independent bookstores. They were the business that were supposed to die. They were supposed to die and completely go off because Amazon was going to kill them. But when they have begun to change, local bookstores have become almost like coffee shops. They are the center of attention and they have changed their business to where their local business is the focus of activity in their community. When the bookstores have changed, to reflect the people who live in their communities. Instead of trying to be a giant Barnes & Noble, they have become all the more successful. They're also known for hosting events. I read of a bookstore that was hosting 500 events a year. 500, that's more than one a day. Different reading clubs, activities for children and families, things to get people out and get them involved. See, in doing that, you can't get that by buying a book on Amazon. You can't get that kind of experience. That's more disruptions. Chain store brick and mortar is threatened. Why? Because they're not creative. Because they don't think. They're a bunch of suits. The days of people like Mr. Sears, Mr. Penny, and Mr. Walton, those individuals are gone. Now we have people who sit at desk and crunch numbers thinking that they can figure out how businesses are. And yet as you look at it, businesses like Sears, businesses like Penny's, many other chain stores are dying off. Well, for one, there's too many. Overall, there's just far too much square footage of retail. Quick example, in Europe, 
the average amount of square footage of retailing per person is a little over three. Three square feet of retail space per person living in Europe. In the United States, it's 23. We have far too much. So this retail apocalypse you're hearing about is more so in the big stores. It's not us, it's the big stores. You being creative keeps you out of the retail apocalypse happening in, you, in your business and your community. Another disadvantage that others have that we won't is that as the virus has taken chain stores, has taken the mass merchants, has taken the box stores off the market in periods of time, it's going to take them longer to ramp up their business because they've also got to ramp up a supply chain. You just have to ask your wholesaler. And if your wholesaler doesn't have something, I trust you're out looking to find another wholesaler who does have inventory on hand. So what are we expecting to see out there? People will never shop again. No, no, no. People will never do this. No, no, no. People forgive and forget. Just like the example I gave you with the baseball. People will come back. There will be additions and there's great opportunities. But to say people are never going to go into a small store again, no, not going to happen. We forgive and we forget what has happened to us. So my first one suggests, contrary to what we're seeing out there, is add hours, not shorten hours. I, I don't get that, where they're saying that their stores and restaurants and other ones are taking and having less space available for the customers and now they're going to shorten their hours. Well, you've shortened up the opportunity by having less space, say at a restaurant. Why would you shorten up the possibility of selling by shortening the hours? To the contrary, you spread your hours out so that the customers are spread out. Promote the concept of people coming to a local business instead of going over to some big box like a Bass Pro. Right? You have a uniqueness to you. We continue to need to promote that. You're going to need to make your stores more spacious. As much as I love going into a small shop and that neat little dig around to find things, that's going to be a problem to come back to that for quite a while. We have to look at spacious to make it easier for people to get around. Um, look at doing things like the way the store looks. But we'll talk about some of those in, in just a moment. We need to look at alternate ways to let people pay. As the pandemic has hit, and they're now telling us about a potential second wave that would be even bigger, people are leery of touching cash. They don't know where it's been. Look at all these opportunities. Look at changing the way you accept pay. I had one just the other day. Uh, did business with someone on over the phone because they were not in my community. And they said, we can make payment real easy. When you hear the tone, take your credit card and punch in the 16 digits of your, your credit card. And it worked just like that. And they said, Look, check your email. There's your receipt. Wow, convenient and easy. If we make it easier for people to do business with us, we're going to win on this one. I believe we have the possibility to see checks come back. I won't mind writing a check and handing it to you, but you'll have some people who are going to be concerned about handing you a hundred dollar bill and you handing them all those bills back and they don't know where all those bills have been. Trust me, the media is going to press that point. Those of us who go in back in business for many, many years, think back to the time where we had check verification services. It wasn't that many years ago. It was a part of the machine that took your bank card. Be prepared to change and have that one available. The aspect of the store. Think about cubic feet, not just square feet. What can you put up in the air? What can you put things higher for people to look at? Add lighting, especially in the corners. The brighter you can make your store, the bigger it's going to look. If you put a lighter color on your walls, your store is going to look better. And if you take your hardwood 
your tile floors, your concrete floors, if you clean them and put a nice finish on them that they have a bit of a, shall we say, a, a lighter look to them, your business is going to look all the bigger. In addition to the fact it looks, it looks cleaner. Yes, folks, things are going to be different. Things are going to us who've ever been in Ikea, we used to laugh at Ikea because you walked in at one place, it was a two-story building, and you were like ducks. You were following the person in front of you. Okay, yeah, well now who's laughing? Doesn't it make sense? I have walked into so many stores of late, and there are patterns on the floor. Walk this way, follow that direction. Is it disruptive to our life? Dadgum right it is but it's becoming the norm out there. Yes, something as big as an Ikea is going to become appropriate to our business. Comfortable with shopping on the internet. Why? Because they had to go to the doctor on the internet. They had to learn to take and do a teleconference with the doctor. They had to learn in certain places to shop for their groceries online. All right, well, this isn't saying you suddenly need to ramp up and put your whole store on the internet. If money's not flowing, I'm the last one who's going to say, you got to suddenly put your whole store on the internet. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see you stay with your website more current. I'd like to see it make it available. But there's ways to combine it, such as looking online, offering to talk with the customer as they look at products online. Nothing replaces the human. As you look at the competition online, I hear people tell me, well, I can't compete with those people because they give free shipping. There is no such thing as free shipping, folks. It's just hidden in the price. It's in there somewhere. It's all in the way that they put the message. Look at ways to take and talk to your customers. Chat features on your website, I'm seeing more of that. And strong ties in any way back to the physical aspect of your business. Every report I continue to see for every age group out there says, People want the brick and mortar aspect. They want the human touch out there. We just have to look at new ways to provide it to people. People who appreciate our contacting them. Nothing at all will replace the experience of you calling customers. The sad part is so many of us think customers are so plentiful like they're out there in boxes available to have all we want at any time and we never bother to find out who they are. We don't get their names. We don't have their phone numbers. We don't have ways of contacting them. When I comment that customer service could get real, I mean, we're going to find the businesses that learn how to make connections with customers are going to do better. Let me give an example. As the virus started, I had gone to a bookstore a local bookstore and I asked them to for a particular book didn't have it they tried to sell me another one I said this is the one book I'm looking for right now they ordered it for me over the next 90 days there were multiple times of phone calls I'm looking for my book the bookstore closed completely down but the employees were going in and saying now we'll offer curbside delivery the disappointing part was I was calling looking for the book. They weren't staying in contact with me. At one conversation I had with them, they said, well, here's the problem. See, books come to us by UPS, and when we're not here, UPS just takes them back. Well, business owner, why didn't you make arrangements to have them deliver the books to your home? Or make a point to ask UPS, to call you. You'd be there in two minutes. Do something to get books that customers have ordered from you. They didn't do it. it. Got to the point where it's like, I'm going to have to give up. I still want to read this book. And after 90 days, you haven't solved it. And so they just said, well, fine. We'll just give you a refund for it. As comparison, let me tell you about an experience in our store. This is where customer service gets real. A customer came in and asked for something of our business one day. I said, I don't have it on hand this morning. Let me ask you, when do you need it? And the answer was, for this weekend. And I said, I got it. This is Thursday. I got it. Okay, I'll have it for you tonight. On your way home from work, stop by. I'll have it for you. Sure enough, the customer comes by later that day. 
I walk up to the cash register and underneath the counter, I pull it out and here's what they asked for. And it's in a bag that's clearly labeled from one of the big box stores. And the customer says, hey, you went down to, they named the store, and said, you went down there and bought that. And I go, I sure did. Well, you didn't have to do that. And I go, I sure do. No, no. See, I could go. The customer's saying, I could go. I could go there and get it myself. And I go, no, you can't. Well, why not? And I said, because you're my customer and I have to take care of you. See, if I tell you I don't have that and you go to that big store, there's other things in there they sell. And my concern is you might see something else that you like and decide to buy it instead of buying it from me. Quite honestly, I can't trust you. I can't trust you that you won't look around at things and you'll only pick up that one item. So to keep you out of their store, I went to their store. I bought what you wanted. Here it is. Here's the receipt. This is how much you owe me. Well, don't I owe you something for going and get it? And I go, no, that's my fault for not having it. You're my customer. I have to take care of you. And I'll make a point to do a better job of having it on hand. That's how I look at it and say, customer service could get real going forward. That bookstore, I still like it. I still want to do business with them. But customer service is going to have to get real. They can't just say, oh, well, I didn't have it. They'll come back for the next one. What if I found the book online somewhere, which I did? What if the place I found online starts talking to me? Hey, how'd you like that book? Hey, we got another book by that same author. You might, would you like to look at it? Hey, in that same genre of books, we, there's some more that just came in. Would you like to look at that? And if that second business, even though online, begins to talk to me, if that online business were to actually call me, ask me, how'd you like the book? Why'd you pick that book? They're going to work to take and move me from one place to another. That's the kind of get real I think customer service is getting. Customers will appreciate that things are American made. People will want to shop local. We do. But we as the merchant can take advantage of that but we have to take and look at how we're going to do it. We need to look at how we should partner with other businesses. Think about businesses in your community that were not as fortunate as you are in being able to have stayed in business. What could you do to help them now going forward? How could we partner with other people? I got some ideas I'll share with you. Delivery of product, installation. So let's say you sell rigs to allow me to carry my rod and reels on top of my truck. Offering installation could be a plus instead of just here it is in a box, buy it and take it home and do it yourself. Servicing my reels, if you don't, makes you more valuable to me. If you learn one thing from what I'm saying in all of today, this is it. Do what they, and they is the competition, do what they don't do, do what they can't. If you want to be unique, if you want to be the go-to business, do what they don't, do what they can't. That will make it easier to do business with them. Can expand their product offering to sell many, many more things. Second major point of the lesson, sell to who, don't focus on what. Don't focus on selling fishing tackle. Focus on who that customer is. Of course, our customers are outdoor people. What about disc golf? What about bicycles and hiking supplies and diving supplies and hunting supplies? We have a business near my hometown in Arkansas that when you first see it, they look like they're a store that sells power equipment. They sell good stuff like steel, which isn't sold in any of the chain stores. All the steel stuff, the, the chainsaws and the power blowers and the backpack equipment and the walk behind and the ride on mowers, all that kind of stuff. Well, all that stuff requires people to be outside. This place also sells bicycles, besides for outdoor people. 
they sell things for disc golf because now there's three disc golf courses in the area and if you want to go play disc golf they are the leading store to go buy disc golf equipment they are now looking at going into hiking because there are a lot more hiking trails perhaps even diving if that becomes something look beyond the one aspect of customers look to that customer and think what else might they do if they love me because i supply them with all their fishing supplies they'll love me because of the other things that i can supply to them of businesses that have done well with this concept in 2008 and 2009 during the, the great recession disney didn't experience a shutdown like they have experienced now but in one year they spent three billion dollars in making changes and improvements to their theme parks most everyone else went into the what we call hunker down mode as a result of this their revenue in their theme parks went up six percent the rest of the things that disney owns like abc and espn only went up four percent so that's a third higher their theme park part of disney had a 16 percent increase in operating profit their stock prices went up 64 percent and their earnings were 30 percent higher than the rest of the market they took a situation they took an opportunity and went and did something brave and bold something different that's the encouragement that i'm bringing to you right now an encouragement to say there's opportunity and there are things that we see that say it can work for you with extra thoughts for the community be a cheerleader and be the leader in your community the community needs leaders at this point this is my hometown dardanelle arkansas and someone created this facebook page they called it dardanelle homebound and they got the city to participate and it says so if you're 65 or older and you need any kind of help because you're afraid to get out at this point you can call the city and leave a message or you can take and connect here in the first 10 days that this facebook page was created it had more than 900 members okay there's less than 4600 people in the town okay they've had over 20 percent of the community get involved it and i saw on here people saying i need my medicine from the pharmacy can somebody help me and immediately people would show up with the facebook postings i'll get it for you can do you need anything else and it was i need groceries or and there were people who would say i went to the grocery store and mistakenly i bought extra milk i did not need all this extra milk i've got two gallons here who needs milk that i can give to you i'll be glad to deliver it to you what I'm saying is, what if a business were to start this? What if a local business were to do this, to be the cheerleader, to say, hey, I'm here to help the community. This is my town. I'm going to take care of my creative business. This lovely lady right here owns a business in Frederick, Maryland. It's called the North Market Pop Shop. When I visited with her years ago, I suggested a program, which she started. And it was every week taking and doing a program which she put on Facebook she would invite the mayor she would invite uh, someone who is in the state legislature she would invite the fire chief she would invite the superintendent of schools a different person every week to come to her shop and they would sample pops as you see over the shoulder there all those pops there all in glass bottles the bulk of her whole store is like that and she has some food items so yes you can get a hot dog you can get some hamburgers you can get some ice cream she has those type of things but the program I prompted her to do, which has continued on, has been to take and sample things with a, a unique customer, someone that people are going to recognize. Well, if I get the mayor in my store, that's a suggested endorsement of my store by the mayor. She can still do it, but now she just has to do it by way of Skype programs, deliver some samples to them. The woman is amazingly creative. At Easter this year, she took those cardboard packages that hold a six pack of soft drinks and she was suggesting to people 
You know, Easter egg hunt is so passe. As well as in some communities, there was a shortage of eggs for a while in stores. How about for your children? How about do an Easter pop hunt? I'll make you up however many six packs you need. You hide the, the pops in, in your yard. This past week, this very creative woman said, how about Friday night and a movie? Here's some of the movies that you can see on the streaming services. Here's the movies on TV. I've, I've got a, a package here for you. And she says, nothing better than movie theater style popcorn. She got a popcorn machine. She pops up your popcorn. Here's some snacks like you would get at the movie theater. That's creative. That's the kind of things that we need to or services. It's be creative in the way that you do it. Let me give you a couple of good examples here. So this lady, because you can't take an old, have your nail salon open, she went portable. Stick your hand through the mail slot and, and she comes to you. The gentleman with the barbershop, he got creative in the way that he did it. You can't open the barbershop. He's not open. The customer is sitting out in the parking lot. All right. People will be more receptive now to you being unique, no matter what product you sell, no matter how you do it. And remember, they forget suggestions. Offer to schedule appointments for people who want to do distance shopping. Okay. Open up some unique hour, whatever it may be. Allow people to schedule an appointment. Have private selling events. This lady's shop is out in the state of Wyoming. Can't remember what town, but I remember she's in Wyoming. She has private tours. All right. But as you do this, now her private tour, as she calls it, is actually you and your friends come shopping. You get the store to yourself. Schedule a time. But what you can do today is find a restaurant because restaurants continue to hurt. Ask them to cater your selling event. Bring in some food. Allow the restaurant to sell some prepackaged food. There'll be a time where that restaurant is going to need you again, and there's going to be a time where you're going to need that restaurant. Create these kind of partnerships. If you decide you're going to serve alcohol, as she did, just make sure that you check with your insurance first to make sure it's okay and check and see local regulations, what they require. I have seen in multiple states where they have let up on what the requirements are as to way people can sell products, particularly alcohol special for your customers. So the story of this bag of coffee, there was a person who in this community started selling coffee. And the problem was they're not a storefront. They were doing mail order, kind of hard to do coffee by mail order. This retailer was a friend of theirs and came up with this idea, not a bag this big. This is the bag that the customers would buy. But this store said, since you can't come into shop with us right now, you can call us. We'll take your order and we'll take and have it for you ready curbside or we'll deliver or we'll mail it to you. And he went to his buddy who had the coffee and said, give me little but tiny sample bags, enough to brew one pot of coffee and put them in the packages. So again, whether it was curbside, whether it was pickup, whether it was delivery, whether it was mail, he had a little note in there that said, hey, thanks for being my customer, even in these trying times. And to say thank you, here's a coffee pot. Not for one pot. Hope you enjoy it. This is from another shop here. And the person who had the coffee, who gave it free to the retailer, said, oh my gosh, my phone is ringing off the hook. People are buying my coffee. And now I get to sample them other types of it. Hey, what can we do further? So all of a sudden, this store becomes the favorite store because they're giving away samples of coffee. The coffee shop guy is glad to provide it because he can't do it with just his mail order stuff. It's a great way to be combining your business with somebody else. You just got to find someone else who'll be that way. And that, my friends, is my story today. That, my friends, is what I think we need to be looking at. I'm going to close. Even if you're on the right track, you're going to get run over if you just stand there. And that's the way I see it right now. We can't just stand there. We got to do things. We got to try things. 
We can't let people just go to internet buying. We've got to be there somehow for them. It's been about 40 minutes together. I hope it's been of value to you. I hope that next year we're going to see each other face to face at ICAST. I hope you continue to have a good year, to have a great year. And remember as you do so, take some other businesses along with you. If you've got questions, email me, call me. I'll be glad to answer. And thanks for your time today.